And that white text on green, I don't know if people can all see it or if I should turn off the lights so that it's easier. Is that readable? Mm -hmm. I do wish we could turn off the spotlight. You can see it? Yeah. All right, so this is the instructor dashboard. Um, when I'm logged in on my other computer, I can see both of the classes that we've done. For some reason, on this computer, I can only see the current class. James, any ideas? Yeah, I don't know, I was kind of there too. What's up with that, James? <laughs> no, I, I thought he might have seen that before and said, oh, you just have to do this. I haven't figured this one out. Um, so this is Chemistry 109 this semester. So you can see the hours logged. Um, and again, this is the aggregate for the whole class. You can see how many entries have been created. Uh, we're talking about 650, 700 students. At this point, started off with a little more, but that's how chemistry one and I goes. Well, and it tells you um, 453 of 781. Right, so we started with 781, mm -hmm. and we're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, over the course of the semester, 58% of those students mm -hmm. did log at least once. Um, well, so actually, technically, the active learners are not active until they logged at least three times, oh, it's three or times. five times, or logged in at least three times. Okay. And I think one of their complaints was actually that they have to log in every time, rather than just click the app on your phone and it opens to your course. There's but that's, that's the Android. So the Android, oh. for whatever reason, the Android app is not as functionally nice uh, as the iOS. Um, mm -hmm. um, so again, there's there's the time spent, and whether it's in class, outside of class, uh, the activity that they're spending the most time on percentage-wise, homework, no big surprise there with chemistry. Um, Friday, most productive time. And then you can hover over these and get a little bit more information. And when a student hovers over these, they can actually see where um, they are relative to the rest of the class, which I think is one of the coolest features of the whole thing. So they can get some indication of, I am spending way more time than anybody else. Maybe I'm not studying effectively, uh, which is kind of the flip side of, yeah, I'm not putting in much time. Mm -hmm. What do you get when you put more data? Let's see. More data. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Um, but before we get there, I need to change something here. Um, so up here, you can choose the course that you're looking at. And so you can actually be looking at multiple courses at the same time. So if you're teaching the same course over a number of semesters, you can aggregate all of that data, which is kind of cool. Um, but right now, I only appear to have one course. And then you can choose the date range that you're looking at. Um, and I think all is the default. I chose the semester, but according to Judith, she didn't set up the groups right at the very beginning of the semester. And so for the first month or so, the data isn't really reflective of how students were spending their time. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go to custom and I'm going to say, let's start And so you see now, once you lop off that first three weeks, we're down to 39% from that 58 where we were. So a lot of students started off using it and then kind of fell off. And we see that with a lot of things that we offer in our class. Um, everybody has the best of intentions when they start, but then it gets to be too much work. Um, and again, our numbers have gone way down here. But more data. This is where it gets fun from the, the instructor perspective. So you get lots of pretty graphs. <laughs> um, productivity. So when are students throughout the day finding themselves to be most productive? And you can see we've got students working 24 hours a day for the most part. And
And what's funny is the highest rank is right here at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. But that's one student who really did well one morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and so you get the, the bubble size to show more students. Um, hovering over will give you numbers, it will give you details. Um, it's a pretty slick interface. So producti productivity by our day, by day of week. Um, here are the categories that we set up. So there's a homework category, class time, exam prep, health. In this class, we added a lab. Uh, and homework is the biggest one there. Total time by activity, which is kind of a nice breakdown. So you can see uh, where your students are spending the most time. And productivity. If there's any particular one here you want to look at, shout out. Um, my favorites are at the bottom. Can you talk just a little bit about the, and maybe not right now, but eventually, mm -hmm. about choosing the activities in the category? Yes, I'll, I'll get to that next. Um, so total time outside of class. I want you to guess when the exams <laughs> were. <laughs> Very, very clear where the exams are because these peaks are the day before the exam. So no surprise. You're, I would bet you see that in every single course on campus. So it's interesting that your first exam was made them more nervous, and then after the first exam, they didn't study as much. Actually, <laughs> this. Remember, we lopped off well, the right first. Exam right. Out of right. So exam one isn't on here. This is exam two and exam three. Hmm. Um, and so they're becoming more familiar, more comfortable with the class. They're getting a better feel for how they have to study. They're not spending quite so much time. You can see that the, the big dip too after the exams. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> get, guess what this is right here. Right. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. yep. And this one, um, active learners. So when they're logging time. Again, you see that big dip for Thanksgiving. Um, in the spring, spring break is a great big trough. So there aren't a lot of surprises. Um, and you can see that it goes in waves when, when they're logging time and when they're not. So are there any of these that you really want to look at before we look at the groups? Is there anything? So with all this data, is there anything that you found surprising or that didn't fit what your expectations already were based on what you knew about the course? Um, I guess the thing that was most surprising to me was the amount of time that some students are spending on the course. Um, so mm -hmm. if we look at average time, um, the, the bars are the range of mm -hmm. entries. And so some students are spending just enormous amounts of time studying for exams. And some, not so much. And just seeing this, this huge range mm -hmm. of time differences that we're seeing students spend. I guess or that was a big surprise. Self-reporting. Right. right. True. How it, you know, that even points to more why we want to see that correlation, the great correlation. Yeah. Right. And why it's important for the app to be super user friendly mm -hmm. so that students are uh, logging as they go. Because if they say, oh, I'll just put it, in all in, put it all in at the end of the week, well, you, you lose a lot of accuracy if you do it that way. It's like, oh, yeah, I think that was about three hours that I spent on Tuesday when maybe not. Did you get any comments from students saying this led me to change in this way? You said there were more self-aware. Right. That down I, James, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do remember seeing a couple of students' comments that said, yeah, I, I did change. 
how yeah. I was using my time. So if you want, actually, um, we just got the latest um, survey for this semester with over 900 students, and I clipped a couple of comments from that. Um, you want to plug it? These are, yeah, these are just students. This is what students <laughs> said on the survey. Um, a number of, like one really made me reconsider how I do work and study for courses. Uh, surprisingly helpful app. Uh, it's a useful app for incoming freshmen like myself because it helps you develop useful study patterns to cater to your learning needs. Uh, it was nice to see how my study habits compared to others in the class. Uh, I enjoyed using it and it helped motivate me to study. Um, this one I thought was interesting. Having a, oh no, let's see that one. Uh, I really liked it and found it very useful. If I noticed my hours getting low, I tried to study a little more so. It was definitely motivating. Um, I like pattern over it all and would use it in other classes. I feel like I was less likely to get distracted while using it because I felt like while it was tracking, I had to be studying. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, yeah. Any negative ones? Where was, yeah. where was the student though who said, I gamed the system by turning it on so it looked like I was studying? Yeah. <laughs> well, self-reported, you could do that. Yeah. Uh, so here are some of the negative comments. Good idea, although I have enough difficulty trying to find time, time to study between work and my personal life, it was not very convenient to have to log hours I studied. I likely would not have used the app if it wasn't extra credit for my course. Um, and then this, this is, I, I love how students trust themselves but know other students. Uh, it's cool to see how you're doing compared to other students, but other students may not be putting in accurate data, which makes the app seem unre unreliable. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it really made me change anything. It told me I wasn't studying as much as my peers, but I didn't really do anything to change that. Um, it felt somewhat discouraging to have my totals compared to class averages when I knew my classmates logged things very differently than me and included a lot of things that I considered irrelevant, which padded their totals. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, by, by far the positive comments outweigh the negative, but I tried to capture both, so. Thank you. Can you talk about the, the categories and the, the challenges that you guys had with uh, trying to, I guess, addressing that last comment of people logging hours differently and then Judith's um, thing about the first month having to put the categories in wrong? Or activities, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And now I don't have activity lists either. But I can make one. So these are um, these are the activities that students log their hours on, and these are the defaults. Um, so different flavors of homework, really out outside of class work, um, in in class, exam prep, and then help. Um, and you can use any or all of these if you don't have. Um, help sessions for your course. You can hide that and then students won't be able to use that as an option. Okay, just quick question here. Mm -hmm. I want to take a class look. Can you move it up a little bit? All right. What, this is an eyeball with a, an eye through it, with a slash through it, and this is an eyeball without the slash through it. Which one can they see? Depends on which application. Yeah. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> so part of the Students log things differently. We see things differently. I and Judith talked right. about this too. Yeah. This was what she had said. Right. So when Judith set up the activity list for Chemistry 109, she took this to be, oh, the eyeball is open, and so this is the activity that they can see. And here it has a slash through it, and so they can't see that one. And so she had the opposite of all the categories that she wanted. And so students were logging things in research and you know these these weird categories that have nothing to do with chemistry 109, which is why we tend to start looking at the data after that first exam, where she figured out what was going on and switched the categories around. It also helps explain why some of your students stopped using it after the first month because they're like, right. "What is this research? This is the stupidest right. app ever. Yeah. It makes yeah. no sense." <laughs> I we, no actually, idea that was one of the uh, a fair number of students that said they want to be able to customize their own, um, which you, you can for any self-created group, for your, for your you, own you, right, right. but you can't right. for a class. So what we would like yeah. is to be able to set up our own groups with our own activities 
um, things that match our course. And a humanities course would look very different from our course. And so they would have different uh, categories. So there's no discussion up there. <coughs> right, there's no discussion. Um, so you can't do anything to these predefined categories except turn off things you don't use. But they have added um, a place where you can add one new category. But just one. <coughs> so it's a little better than it was, but not a lot better than it was. And so you could call it other and put all of your other things in. But then when you start looking at that aggregate data, you have homework and exam prep and other, and all these things that you're really interested in are just in other. So it's not a great solution. So, so there's no subcat. You can't have subcategories too. You can't have subcategories. You could just have a category and then activities under that category. Does, does it have a function that would let a student say, "My goal is to spend six hours this week," and, and then notify them you're not on track to do that? Not that I'm aware. Of, no. That's part of the push notifications. Right. Yeah, That's I mean part that, of the that could potentially mm -hmm. be a, a push notification. Page. And and uh, a lot of students also said something along the lines of really great idea, needs further refinement, has a lot of potential, right. not quite there yet, yep. kind of thing. So, um, Purdue put this together. Do you, do you know how they're using it uh, over there? It was a tool they created? Um, so a little bit. And so that, that actually gets it, like, some of this category stuff. For them, they want this, <coughs> they want the categories to be the same for data reasons across mm -hmm. classes. Right because then it's easier to compare and be like, oh, as a university or as a department, et cetera, et cetera. Because when you start changing up the categories and activities, then you can't compare data mm -hmm. across classes, which is part of, of what they want to do. Uh, and then they're also doing a big push into the advising community. So there's actually an advising dashboard that they just added this semester where a student uh, can share their entries directly with an advisor. Uh, and then so the advisor can see exactly how much time they're spending on everything and therefore can supposedly, I guess, advise them on, hey, looks like you're not spending enough time on homework versus something else. So they're, they're kind of pushing it in new directions as well. So is it something that they ask like all incoming freshmen to? to no, so they're, they're like still kind of piloting. In fact, I think we had more users than they did all right. this last semester. Um, so this is just something that, that, I mean, they literally built it about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. And its initial iteration was entirely student. Like, there was no instructor dashboard. It was just supposed to be a, a tool for students to help track their own study habits. And they just kind of iterated on it over time. Uh, and then we got involved, in, and uh, we have been able to push them on a number of feature changes. And in fact, we have another meeting with them coming up in January specifically to talk about feature requests going forward. So, if you look at the uh, the sheet, right, this Purdue Studio uh, is has a whole bunch of their apps, and there's a link to that and a short description of that. But the other one uh, that's sort of an interesting learning analytics thing is Signals, and that's more for the instructor. Wait, or wait, no, that one's actually for the students too. So. That does do the push notifications of like, hey, it looks like you're having trouble here, or it looks like based on your study habits and these different predictors that you are not going to do well in this course. Just kind of fatalistic message, but. Um, so there are, there are, this is not the only app out there. In fact, I just did a Google Play Store um, search for it, and there are over 50 apps for Android right now. I imagine we have the same number for the iOS thing. So students have lots of choices um, besides pattern. And most of them are free. The advantage to pattern is they get the class data as yes. well. So they can see how the rest of the class is using their time. Yeah, and that's a significant. Yeah, and the instructor has access to it, and right. potentially advisors can right. access it. Yeah. Yep. And actually, another one of the top requ requested features from students is they would love to see the correlation between 
studying and grades. So they'd love yeah. to see yeah. what other students, how much time they're studying and what grades they're getting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that's not something we can get from our instructor dashboard. Is that something you can? So, yeah, so there's, needs? we're doing, we recently, because pattern tracks so much, we recently got access to the raw data, which we've never had access before. And Kim, who's our evaluation specialist, is kind of the, the driver behind the, this tool on our campus. And Kim actually worked on signals. She came from Purdue, so she, she knows the right familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, so she's planning to do some um, analysis with the raw data. <coughs> uh, and we also, there's another instructor, Miguel, at the business school, Miguel, um, Garcia Gonzalez, who um, actually did a, uh, he, he took the names of all the students, this was in spring semester, who had used pattern um, and you know throughout the course of the semester, and he did find a correlation between pattern users and higher grades. But then of course in his mind it was like, is this a chicken or egg, right? Is it right. The, the better students the better are students using students pattern, therefore yeah. they're getting higher grades, or is it pattern is helping them be better students and therefore they're getting higher grades? Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing I wanted to show is a little more of what the student experience looks like. So in addition to your instructor dashboard as an instructor, you also have a personal dashboard. And um, you could, in theory, set up your own course where you log the amount of time that you do for exam prep and lecture prep <coughs> and all that, and when you're most productive, and uh, you could use it to keep track of your own time. Um, but what a student will do with the computer interface is if they're part of a course that's using pattern, um, they'll have a group called Chemistry 104, Chemistry 109, whatever it is. Um, but they can also add their own groups. So if they want to log their time for all of their classes and just you know keep track of that, they can add their own group. Um, so, <coughs> and then they log which activity they're doing. They put in a time and date, we'll just go with that. And then how productive was that? And I thought that went pretty well, so we'll throw that in. And then it gets added to their aggregate, um, and so they can see how their study habits are evolving over the course of the semester. And they can even break it down to, I'm going to look at the first month and see what my study habits look like. And then I'll see what happened after exam one and see if I changed anything. And so they really can see an evolution of interest. So one of the things to point out, and the reason that we did not have an actual hands-on activity today was partly because of this. Um, James pointed out that unless we went in and logged a whole a certain amount of stuff, like get to log in three times and have at least five hours logged or whatever the threshold is, we could do all this logging and it wouldn't actually show up as an aggregate sort of thing in the class because we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have enough time this morning to be active um, people in it. So that's why there's no hands on today, other than hands on data. <laughs> and then students also, if they have data, they can see a lot of that other stuff that we saw from the instructor's perspective. But then it's just their data. Um, and then hovering over these, when they're part of a class, they can see how they compare to the rest of the class. For those different activities. Uh, so I'm assuming there's no way to like, add yourself to a group. Um, so like, if I was in Spanish 101 and I made it myself, other Spanish 101 students could, could like, compare no. each other at all? No. The only way that um, they can share their data is number one through the advisor dashboard, which um, I, mean, I guess a student could technically set up another student as an advisor, and there's nothing stopping them from doing that. Yeah. Uh, or 
they can you can generate a PDF report that you can share with anybody yeah. you want. I was thinking more like you know when you set up your class, you, like students can see how they compare to other students in the class. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting if you could set it up where they could join. You know, it wasn't mandatory; it was a part of it, but you could join the Spanish one on one just to see how other students that semester were logging and doing. I can see that in like a fraternity as part of their like let's focus on grades, let's all track our time spent on this and then we could like meet and say we're not doing very well. Like we're doing great. Study support groups. Study support yeah. groups, yeah. That's actually one of the reasons the creator pointed to as why he developed this fraternities and sororities. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was in that article that's on the activity sheet. Yeah. Other questions or comments? What are your thoughts? What do you think? Would you find this useful if you were a student? Would you do it if you were a student? Or would you have too much other stuff to do? Especially as a graduate student. Like really, do you really think you'd have enough time to do this? I think as a freshman, or for me, this makes a lot of sense. I don't know about the graduate students. You know, they've kind of they've gotten there. You know, so. study. <laughs> so. And you know, at that point, you know what works best for you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if I would care how a lot of people study that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, so like in my graduate program, we we all read this book called How to Write a Lot, and one of the ideas is that you sit down and you like set a timer. <laughs> you know, and this if something tracked. And you could see like progress, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure down the road you can get like a trophy if you write for you know 100 hours or something. You know what it's I mean? Half hour a day, right? Absolutely, you know, yeah. From noon to 5:30 in the morning. Oh yeah, this is really <coughs> yeah, really cool. And that's why I was thinking, um, you know, I think this is great as R and D, but I think there's too much. If if I were kind of on the writing side or reading side, if I just said I want to make sure I'm spending seven hours a week on class. You know, one hit and I activate it, and if by Wednesday I've only got two hours, it's like, you know, you serious? Yeah. You know, if, if it did just Start that. Right. shocks. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be even better. <laughs> but if it did only that, it would be like, oh, okay, I, I start it once, and, and you know, it, it keeps an eye on me. And I'm sure there are tools out there that do exactly that. Yeah. This just isn't that one. Mm -hmm. I actually like the data. I'm not a, I'm not a data. Long. But I do love to look at yeah. what is effective in education. That's kind of my mm -hmm. field of study when I get to do that kind of stuff. And all there, when I look at the charts, I'm like, there's so many questions that I could research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could, yeah. This could be a whole little research project. The charts are beautiful. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, they're really kind of well done. Mm -hmm. There are clunky aspects to it for sure. And I think part of the logging. So that I would just say on those comments, two of the surprising things that we found from our spring semester survey, number one, it was rated equally across um, years. So freshmen rated as highly as sophomores and juniors and seniors, which, because yeah, I, going in we were totally like, oh yeah, I, I can see how freshmen are people who really aren't familiar with the, their study habits would find this more useful, but it did not bear out in the data. It was, all, they all rated it about the same regardless of class standing. Uh, and then the second thing that I found really interesting is um, most of the pilot courses have been STEM courses, and it seems to make a lot of sense because there's you know a very prescribed kind of course of study in those as far as you have practice problems and, and there's exams and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the <laughs> class that actually ended up using it the most and having the most people use it in other classes was the 40-person history class. And they were the ones that like, gave us three paragraphs of feedback. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, shocking. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that part wasn't shocking, but it was just interesting to me. And they were the ones who also were by and large most enthusiastic about it, because this was not a tool that I initially was like, saw as lending itself to humanities kind of courses. But. Did they have any kind of incentive to use it? Yeah, I mean, they did. It was, it was like half of a quiz grade or something like that, um, you know, and so it wasn't, anything that was like, wow, this is really going to uh, affect it. And that was actually one of the interesting part of their feedback was that they talked about extra credit a lot less 
and the fact that they used it in other classes where there was no extra credit mm -hmm. was surprising. Well, I think it's an interesting observation to think about the role of, of, of the I don't know, quality of the learning community. So like <laughs> in a 700 person class, perhaps people are much more disconnected, whereas in the 40 person class, maybe they feel more connected to one <coughs> another. And as you mentioned earlier, people were like, oh, well, I worry about the accuracy of other students. Yeah. So maybe there's more trust there, but that mutual trust brings people in. I, I, I will say that uh, we actually have a graduate it's a, a nursing class that's using it this semester, and their participation rate is something like 78 <laughs> percent. Hmm. It would be interesting, to, even if it were an anonymized data for the instructor, maybe even after the course, so after grades are submitted or whatever, to be able to go in and see an anonymous list of all of the individuals and just to see if there is that one student who consistently entered 120 hours a week that he, you know he or she studied just to gain, to be able to identify the people who gained the system. Well, once you get enough data, you should be able to norm it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Which I wonder if it does that or if it... I thought I saw when you first logged in, I thought I saw at the very top it said, <laughs> some have been removed from yeah. abnormally like exclude, long... Exclude yeah. long duration. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. That, and that stems from the timer <coughs> and the app. And right. a number of students mentioned this in the survey. What will happen is they'll hit start and they'll hit stop. Right. And so actually one request was, it really should yeah. like after an hour or two be like, hey, are, are you, you still studying? Yeah. <laughs> or are you still yeah. listening? Right. Right. Oh, yeah, there it is. See, and that's kind of long, too. Over 24 hours is the threshold. Like, maybe eight. <laughs> well, I think, I think the, the person, getting back to the frat thing, I think the person who designed it was like, hey, I remember right before finals in college, I spent 24 hours straight studying, so it's possible. Well, and I think that is something that maybe you could override, but in terms of, like, the default. Yeah. The yeah. threshold, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. I, I also see another couple of data applications. So, so UHS, I was trying to like say, do these kinds of things to reduce your stress. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things, and so these kinds of things can uh, that these <coughs> kinds of, as the data comes in inform the kinds of recommendations that UHS can give. So it's kind of going to different places. Mm -hmm. I also see. I wonder the analytics piece of um, fully online co courses mm -hmm. and how that informs the instruction designer or yeah. instructor. Like, oh wait, this, it, and because that's a whole different level of commitment when students are taking a whole different online course. Mm -hmm. And a whole different pattern of study that we need to mm -hmm. participate in. Just one last question about it. Um, how good is it at explaining itself? Like, is there any kind of like introductory video tutorial or anything that, goes, that it has? There or, are, yeah. Yeah. So you could. Um, I have asked people outside of class, watch this video, we're thinking of using this, mm -hmm. come into class the next day, and okay, how many people are interested in you? Or is it that you have to stand up there and say, all right, here's an app. I want you to open this on your computer. Go to this link, now click here, and I mean, do you have to walk them through it, or does it kind of sell itself? There are videos, I think. I know right that here. there are pages. First time here, watch a video, yeah. start the dashboard. Yeah. Does the personal dashboard have it as well? Yes, yes it does. Okay. I, can't see that. I remember seeing it when I was as a student. Yeah. Oh, okay. Usually it's in the front row, Dan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a little over designed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the KB yeah, the article yeah. does have a lot of really good resources. Uh, and, and students, by and large, the feedback is it's very simple to understand. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's almost nobody's like, there's a lot of complaints about it being clunky and they wish it was easier to track stuff, but nobody says, I just didn't understand how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's their generation, this is their language. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and just one other comment here, just particularly since we had the analytics and recommendation last week, so you can kind of get a, a vision of where learning analytics might be moving, is you have something like analytics and recommendation, which is very quantitative data, and then you have something like pattern, which is very <laughs> qualitative and in the sense that students are entering it, uh, mm. this this gives you a window into the students' heads mm. more than what their grades are. And so, in the future, the thought is if you can bring these different kind of data streams together in a mm. dashboard, then you can really start 
to get some interesting kind of looks at students and what you can do to help them and what they can do to help themselves. So this would be something that you would plug in the data from pattern with the data from something like analytics and recommendation and that would give you a very interesting profile of a student that you could potentially do a lot with. Well, there's a really interesting thing there. If you really like the class, you can be like, oh, I hardly spend any time on this at all. And then you look at the actual quantitative, quantified stuff and you're like spending all of your time there and then the class that you absolutely hate, you're like, so much time <laughs> spent on this and you're like, I'm actually, you've only spent three hours speaking on it. So, I mean, because that perception right. track is sort of important too.